It's not like one lady had some sharks. Like, everyone has sharks. Look at these sharks. There's sharks everywhere here. These sharks are small. Welcome to Goa Part 2. In Part 1, local Goan Jasmine brought me around town for some forbidden street food. You are so naughty. Beef, pork, you have all the forbidden meats in there. Yeah. Now I'm back for more. I've been all around the world in search of the unique, the weird, Oh my effing god. And at times, the bizarre. Is there a right way to do this? Yeah. Okay. Yes. But India doesn't really eat weird food. Delicious spices, fresh breads, yes. But nothing that's caught me by surprise until now. What the? Sharks? No kidding. They have little sharks here. Have you ever cooked a shark? Yeah, yeah, we eat some. Oh my god. Goa has a tropical climate, situated along India's west coast, on the shore of the Arabian Sea. Life here is incomplete without seafood, and they've got tons of it. Do you ever cook these? I've got enough fish as it is. This is Anjali, retired and taking care of her parents, but still looking to take up some work. She decided to extend her home cooking to travelers and food lovers from around the world. Oh, hi there. Hi. How are you doing? Nice hi. to meet you. Yeah, good morning. Today, Anjali will introduce me to real traditional Goan Hindu cuisine. A staple diet is fish curry rice. You're going to have a total Goan homemade food. So grab your your sharks and hold on tight. This is Indian seafood go in style. Early morning, Goa. On our way to meet Anjali, a woman passionate about food with three kids who encouraged her to do exactly what she's doing today, spreading the joy of traditional Goan Hindu cuisine. How long have you been here? I grew up in Bombay. I've lived here for 40 years. Like I can feel the difference, but yeah. how would you describe it? The air it? is healthy. The food that we eat is healthy. Mm. The air that we breathe is healthy. People that don't have that push you and go ahead attitude in Goa. It's a little more like relaxed pace. Yes. What is different about food in Goa? There's two distinct cuisines in Goa. There's a Catholic cuisine and there's a Hindu cuisine. We enjoy both, but basically every day I cook the Hindu. When it comes to Anjali's homemade food, the ingredients gotta be fresh. <laughs> This is Goa's most happening market, a market of abundance. Everything you need can be found here, including chilies, garlic, and pretty much anything that grows from the ground. What are we having today? We are going to have amaran. Amaran? Yeah, that is a red one. Yes. How do you cook that? We fine, chop it, take an onion and a chili, mm. and cook it. Are there any vegetables eaten raw? Yeah, we have cucumber. Great. Goa is unlike any other place in India, representing different religions and therefore different diets. But Christians and Hindus do live harmoniously so far. Angeline, as far as I understood, beef was prohibited, like forbidden. But right behind us, there's about 11 different beef shops. We don't have prohibition in Goa, because in Goa, the Catholics, majority of them have beef. So we have beef selling here regularly. They just have some difference in diet, but nobody cares. No, we live harmlessly so far. So far? <laughs> oh, all right, that sounds good. Oh, is that dolphin meat too? No, no, we don't have dolphin meat. Oh, okay. It smells like a fish market. Yeah. Oh my God, this is my first time going to this kind of market in India. Shrimpies, clams, oysters, fish, crabs. Hey, not so fast, little guy. You're gonna be food for somebody. I've never seen such a fresh seafood spread in India, but there are only a few vendors Anjali trusts to bring the goods, starting with her shell guy. Is this your shell person? Yes. And why do you choose this person? Because he's reliable. Okay. And I have developed a relationship, so now he will, he will never give me stale fish. Okay, that's good. I've never had a shellfish cooked in India. And is it cooked with Indian spices? Yes, sir. Wow, this is really new, something really cool. These are mud crabs we are going to buy for our lunch today. How do you decide which mud crab to get? We normally buy the females. The female is much tastier than the male. Look at this, it's like a little fish Christmas tree. What the? Sharks? No kidding. They have little sharks here. Have you ever cooked a shark? Yeah, yeah, we eat shark. You can fry them or you can make a gravy with them. I had a shark heart in yeah. Japan. It has a pungent, strong locker room kind of smell coming off of it. Mmm. 
wonderful, salty, smoky, charred flavor. It was just like kind of a beef yeah, flavor. It's like meat, but soft. It's this wasn't supposed to be on today's menu, but now it definitely is. Baby shark. Do, 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 do. There's a common misconception about eating sharks. You can read them in the comments right now. People tend to believe that they're off limits, but the real controversy is over finning of sharks or eating sharks that are endangered. Neither is taking place here. There's more sharks here. It's not like one lady had some sharks. Like everyone has sharks. Look at these sharks. There's sharks everywhere here. These sharks are small. They even have big sharks outside. Here it seems no different than munching on chicken or mutton. And I can't wait to see how she cooks this up. I love that this is like Indian style shark made with Indian spices, that's so cool. These will become shark mori cutlets. In the market, the sharks were skinned and cut into small bite-sized pieces. Now the marinade, turmeric, salt, green chili, garlic, and ginger. I've washed the shark five, six times. Oh, yeah, five, because, six times? Yeah, because it tends to have a specific odor. Oh. And if you don't wash it thoroughly, that odor gets into the fish. Is it like ammonia? Because when I had it in Japan with the blood, it was like an ammonia smell, mm. like a bathroom. It's okay. not that bad. Not that bad. Next, coat it in rice flour and fry it in fresh coconut oil. When it turns a nice golden brown, plate and serve. Anjali has prepared a traditional Goan feast. Crab, clams, prawn cake, prawn curry, fish, chicken chakuti, vegetables, it's all here. And the shark too. You told me earlier it is your stress buster yes. to cook. How are you feeling? Pretty low stress? Yeah, I'm fine. And my yeah. stress buster of course, is eating. eating. And so this is like the perfect combination right here. Good. I can't wait to jump in. Where should I Please, start? You can start with the chapati mm -hmm. and with the chicken chapati. Now, this is a little bit dangerous. I had something like this last night. You're going to shove that entire thing in your mouth? I would like to see. <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> the bone. There's little bones in it. All these pieces have bones in it. You will not find a piece without bones. Why is that? This is supposed to be small pieces. Neck, back, front, chest. You... Even the drumsticks are broken, cut. Really? Yeah. Let's try it out. Mmm. You know, there's always something different about home cooking. Yeah. Especially in India. So the flavors are so much more gentle. It's very nice. So here we have the crab. Go in spiced crab. Cut it in half, then bring to a boil with onions, water, and a homemade masala. Family secret. Eat it with the shell still on. You throw the whole thing in? Yeah. Mmm. Mm. I've never eaten crab in this way. So the dry thing is keep it out. Yeah. That's pretty cool. It's like crab chewing gum. I feel like a spider when it sucks all the juices, yeah, juices. out of a fly. <laughs> it is good, it's very sweet. And again, like gentle spices and just nice very natural gentle. sweetness of the crab meat. Mm. Next, prawn curry. Radish boiled in a shallow curry gravy, topped with prawns, coconut milk, and mixed with minced ginger, salt, curry leaves, and cooked until the aroma makes you weep with joy. Oh my God, I've never had so much Indian seafood. Seafood in India must be much more common in the south. What I've given you is just nothing. It's just a tip of the iceberg. Really? I want to try this out. Mmm. Just sweet, delicious, fatty coconut milk. Oh, it's so good. This is Goa's popular lunchbox treat. Chopped prawn with minced onion, grated coconut, pepper, salt, turmeric, and rice flour. Shallow fry in coconut oil. Okay, I'm gonna try a little bit of this. Yeah. The prawn patty. Wow, this is delicious. Little chunks of shrimp in there. And then on the outside, there's different texture. What is this yeah, one? Yeah, that's the rice flour. Mm. That gives a crispness to it. Mm. I could eat like 50 of those. Yeah. So here, something I did not expect to see in India. A lot of countries I go to, I try some unusual foods. Like I've eaten a lot of bugs. I've eaten like raw blood. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> not appetizing, right? Mm. And as far as I can see, India, out of any country I've been to, by at least Western standard, it all seems more like usual. Everything is very usual. Yeah, except for a shark, because very few people in the US eat shark ever. We have shark pretty regularly. What I made in chicken, we make from shark also. Mm. But today you've kind of pan fried it. Yeah. Here, there's a bone in the middle. Yeah. So I'm just going to remove that. Here we go. Interesting. It doesn't have any distinct flavor. No. It's very soft, a little fatty. I wouldn't be able to tell the difference between any other just kind of white fish. It's good though. And again, there's just something about home cooking that's so much better than restaurants. I'm gonna have one more sharky bite. Mmm, I like it. Shark is good. 
Anjali, you taught me so much about going food. It was an incredible experience. I'm glad I could sit down with you yeah. and enjoy all this hard work that went into this. It's my pleasure. All right, thank you so much. Next time on the Best Ever India Road Trip, we're headed to Bangalore to witness one of India's breathtaking mega kitchen. Here there are 11 of these cauldrons. Do you know the volume of these? Each cauldron can prepare food for 1,000 kids. Wow. Be sure to subscribe and follow along as we eat our way across India. And if you're traveling to Vietnam, let me recommend adventuring alongside a guide from One Trip. One Trip is the highest rated tour company in Vietnam, doing tours from north to south in all major cities, including Hanoi, Nha Trang, Da Nang, Hoi An, and Saigon. You can experience food tours, adventure tours, and more. To learn more about One Trip, check out the links in the description down below. See you next time. Peace.